Nurgle is love. Nurgle is life. All praise the plague father with the corpse of death. The pact of Nurgle in a nutshell. To me death is not a fearful thing. It's living that's cursed. Jim Jones. Because ultimately, death is not the opposite of life, but the opposite of choice. Death is what you get when there are no choices left to make. The fool, Robin Hogg. Death is not a hunter unbeknownst to its prey. One is always aware that it lies in wait. Though life is merely a journey to the grave, it must not be undertaken without hope. Igor, Persona series. If everything is shit, why worry about it? Unknown Vermark soldier. Nurgle making one of his usual recipes for Christmas. What the Imperium doesn't want you to know is that he is in fact Santa Claus in disguise. Nice guy really. Introduction. The unholy combination of your loving grandfather and Santa, if all he gave you were plagues, and every day was Christmas. Also known as Papa or Grandpa Nurgle, he is the god of misunderstood sick fucks and all diseases. Nurgle is primarily the god of despair, stagnation, death and decay, signifying the end of things in the material realm. Nurgle can be considered the god of everything, because no matter how permanent anything may seem, it will always eventually wither and decay in the end. While death is inevitable, sapient creatures will also fight against it with all available power, even to the point where they bargain with the gods of the warp to flip death the bird. This is also a literal insult to Nurgle, as refusal to accept one's death is offensive to him. And this is where Tsin Shaw Nagash comes in. These ideological opposites is where Nurgle and Tsinch's rivalry largely comes into play. Nurgle is also the god of other stoic emotions, such as inevitability, empathy, kinship, happiness, struggle, love, tradition, mercy, and memory. Unlike Tsinch who tells his followers to deny death to continue to achieve greater things, Nurgle tells his followers to accept the inevitability of their demise, and by doing so, achieve solace and happiness. His followers will vigorously spread the joyous teachings of Papa Nurgle and if those living fleshbags won't listen, they'll be shown all the pleasant ways for them to experience death's warm embrace. In the 1984 Ian, cold, dark grim darkness of outer space, where life sucks and everyone's a dick, Nurgle cares, and he loves you. He brings you family, love, and the time to embrace that love fully and become one with it. He accepts you for who you are, as long as you stay that way. Also don't wash, don't shave, don't change your underwear. You're great the way you are. He knows that you have been abandoned by your past lovers, friends and family. He knows that you need the feeling of belonging, security and stability in your life. He will embrace you if you trust him to bring you an eternal, painless existence. Just ignore the pus and the smell coming from folds inside your body. Murgle's chosen champions are the warriors of Chaos Plague Marines who have willingly accepted his myriad diseases and let him turn them into shambling, bloated zombie-like carrions that no longer feel any pain. Though it is not well known, he does have a few sisters of battle who worship him. The nature of Nurgle is that anyone suffering from one of his plagues is counted as one of his worshippers, and he'll grant chaos blessings freely to them. In 41k, he saved the elder goddess Isha from Slanesh, to become his pox fulcrum a guinea a pig for Nurgle's concoctions, who can't be killed by them and wife. Slanesh is still upset and doesn't really like Nurgle for that. Nowadays, Nurgle and Isha live as a happy couple in Nurgle's garden somewhere in the wall. Nurgle likes to cook, and Isha is always eager to taste his stewings. In fantasy, Nurgle kept the human goddess Shalar captive as his box fulcrum, until she was rescued by Dante Alighieri called a Drago, and two elves. With the second a female taking Shalar's place, in Age of Sigma he becomes fixated on Illyriel and her dryer daughters. Generally speaking he's the third most powerful chaos god after Khorne and Siege, respectively. But even at his weakest, he's still always stronger than Slanesh at their strongest. His power waxes during great plagues and times of great despair, decay, stagnation and when individuals let go of their ambitions. He becomes less influential during periods of great hope, change, evolution and when cures for his plagues are found, as well when individuals give in to their ambitions. During an especially big plague and or period of stagnation even more so than as usual for Warhammer anyway, excluding GW's own stagnation of the storyline as well as their business, sick burn. Bro, which would in theory make him the strongest god, but as soon as this is acknowledged, things would no longer be stagnant, just as Siege had planned, decay and despair, 
he can temporarily become the mightiest chaos god in his realm will encroach upon the realms of the other chaos gods in the neutral undivided, law or unlined parts of the warp. But as all power in the warp is in constant change due to the life of the material realm being what it is, events that fuel his burst of power will eventually end and he will return to the position of being in the third place. Nurgle is hero of all fat guys, ripe, fat and smelly. Other than being bloated, living corpses filled with wriggling vermin. Nurgle followers have other iconic traits. Singular or triple eyes arranged in a triangle, long tongues or insectoid appearances, singular horns, and ringing bells. They usually paint their armor in a snotty greens, doki browns, or bile yellow. Most often greens, though. As can be expected, of all the chaos gods, Nurgle is the most likely to corrupt orcs goblins orcs. As if those sons of bitches couldn't get any tougher. Papa Nurgle's forces. Great unclean ones, greater demons with great sense of humor and a jolly split belly ready to jiggle with laughter. These merry guffaws make their entrails dangle from their open festering wounds, which Nurglings and beasts love to jump up and down on and play with. You can smell the tangy perfume of ruptured boils, and it's said Nurgle himself is kind enough to coat their swords in the contagion of his own throne. What a swell chap, never too high and mighty to help his followers. Beasts of Nurgle, these are the puppa dogs you ask Santa for. Complete and equipped with wagging tails, a long tongue to lick you in the face, the scampering excitement of youth, a slug-like texture and paralytic toxins. If they get a little too excited they might peddle corrosive acid. Become a stalwart Nurgle follower and get one today. Rotfly, beasts of Nurgle who have become bitter and have transformed into a giant insect. Typically ridden by Plagubras into battle. Plagubras, reincarnated souls of Nurgle's followers or the victims that fell to Nurgle's rot. Nurgle is so generous that the gift of demonhood isn't just for demon princes. They look like the bloated corpses of the drowned, but instead of water, they swell with pus and black bile. They are typically surrounded with swarms of buzzing flies, who make the Plagubras much more complicated targets of shooting attacks. Really love to share their gifts. Their arms are made for hugging. Nurglings, look like a tiny child's toy versions of Nurgle himself. They are Sidward and every Nurgle trooper wants the Schlaw, Pitta, drip of a pet Nurgling of their own. Which is great because Nurglings can grow inside the skin of any Nurgle worshipper. The more plagued you are, the more likely you are to be pregnant with a few or more of these cute buggers at any given time. Poxwalkers, mortals infected by Nurgle's rot and perhaps representing the transitional stage before one becomes a Plagubera after succumbing to Papa Nurgle's blessings. They are basically demon-powered zombies, shambling forward slowly and carrying only improvised melee weapons. Plague Marines, mostly consist of members of the 14th Legion, although a substantial number of the 16th Legion are now also blessed with Papa Nurgle's gifts. As a start you are immune to pain and minor injuries, these guys are particularly difficult to kill. Plagutouched Warband, warriors of chaos who worship Nurgle, Nuff said. Putrid Blightkins, Plagutouched who are blessed with a living rod by Nurgle via his demon flies. Many have lost their internal organs and either constantly give birth to Nurglings or use it as a fungus infested storage space much like refrigerators and student corridors or a place for hanging bells. Pusgoyle Blight Lords, elite putrid blight kings who have been given the right to ride a rod fly into battle. Harbingers of decay, more corpses than men who ride from settlement to settlement spreading Nurgle's plagues. Rodbringers, the wizards of Nurgle. Magath Lords, blight kings who are particularly favored by Nurgle and are granted giant Isla Soga like demons with gaping maws called Pox Magaths to ride. Feculent Noelnor, demon trees from the garden of Nurgle that pop up in the wake of Nurglite incursions. The first depiction of Nurgle in Warhammer art, back when an obvious phallic symbol as a sigil was nothing to be sneezed at. Anecdotes about Nurgle. About a year ago, I was out having a few drinks with the guys, when in walks Nurgle. He bought drinks for everyone in the bar. When we were all too hammered to drive home, he loaded us all up in his old Mazda 96 and bust us around town until we all made it back home. And when that cop pulled us over and tried to make trouble, Nurgle boiled his eyes out of his anus. Nurgle is a great guy. Me and Nurgle were going to go see this movie. I can't remember the name. And we were passing through the bad part of this cornered neighborhood. Some fucking bloodletters ran out in front of the car and started denting up the damp thing. Nurgle just sits there, waiting for them to get out of the way, with that big goofy smile on his face. It wasn't until one of them busted my window and tried to drag me out of the car that Nurgle absolutely flips out. Before I know it, the whole road is ground zero for like an army of little black things. 
I couldn't figure out what they were until the blood letters start screeching, running around in circles and clawing at their notes, as their genitals just start exploding, one by one. Nurgle drives off, just wearing a smile. Fucker gave them all a case of super crabs. We laughed all the way to the show. I love Nurgle. He is a pretty fun guy to be around, just like Ken. When I visited the Nurglets family and met Papa Nurgle, he greeted me at the doorstep, football in hand, wearing an old fuzzy sweater and funny orange slacks, with a big goofy grin that said, I like you already. You know, it's a good thing in that grimdark universe, with pointy aliens blowing off your limbs, some undead robots trying to deatomize you, the Imperium with its thrown vegetable for an emperor and the Inquisition trying to exterminate the shit out of everybody, you get to have the most loving family circle ever. Sure, you start to smell a little funny, get a sore here and there, a rash in your ass, but hell, you never ever feel pain or get upset since you no longer fear death. You get to have an immortal, eternal father that spreads joy and gifts all around, with plenty to spare, and a nuglet wife that is most loving and caring, if you can stand her burps and farts. And while you will be the most hideous thing in the universe, what uses appearance and health if everybody else is willing to take it away from you? When I was about 5 years old, my mother got diagnosed with lung cancer. After a month or two, her condition became worse and she started to have these random coughing fits and shortly thereafter, she started to cough blood. My father was not allowed to take a loan to try to find a trustworthy and professional and thus expensive doctor to set up a recovery program. So my mother decided to just live on pain pills and do as much as possible for our family before her body gave up. Then one day, completely out of nowhere, my mother collapses on the stairs of our home and does not wake up even as we put wet blankets on her face. My father takes the car and immediately drives us to the hospital. The physicians tell us that her body is dying. She is in great pain and there is nothing we can do. As we are standing there, next to her bunk. Exhausted from unrest and tears, I see Nurgle standing next to me. Time freezes and the room suddenly fills with a sweet scent, like those white flowers of blooming apple trees. Nurgle has this goofy smile on his face. He reaches down towards my mother and just as I see his finger make contact with her shoulder, she gasps and her face lights up as if she instantly got 20 years younger. She looks so beautiful and innocent, laying there. Nurgle tells me that he is sorry, but for my mother to stop feeling pain, he needs to take her with him. Her goodness, beauty and love will live forever. As I see my mother's skin darken and fall off, to reveal corrupted and worm infested flesh, sliding off in heaps to eventually reveal the bones turning into milky paste, I hear her last words. Thank you. Nurgle saved my mother and for that, I am eternally thankful. Nurgle is love, Nurgle is life. Relationship with other gods. Tyrannid hive mind the hive mind hates Nurgle, as he causes Biomus to go bad and be unrecyclable. Nurgle doesn't like the Tyranids that much either, as they have such a high disease resistance and quickly become immune to any disease he throws at them. Tsinch Nurgle and Tsinch are art enemies, though their relationship is still a great deal friendlier than Korn and Slanesh. Nurgle thinks that Tsinch should accept people for who they are, consider the feelings of the people that he steps on in his many schemes and plots and be more loving to his followers and demons. Treat them like a family, instead of faceless pawns. Tsinch's opinion was pretty difficult to understand, due to frequent Tourette's like outbursts of just as planned. Half of our crew report that he thinks that Nurgle should stop delving on the past, get used to collateral damage and stop being such a wuss, while the other half think the complete opposite. Empirical evidence show that they are still far more likely to cooperate than Korn and Slanesh, would be if only for a little while. After all, one can flow into the other grief and despair can be fertile ground for hope, and crushing someone's dreams can drive them into depression. Con Nurgle isn't very comfortable with Korn's kill em all, fuck sorting them out policy. Though he likes the fact that Korn refuses to allow his mortal followers and demons to attack the innocent and helpless except in most of Korn's fluff, when the writers forget this, but hey. This is clearly imperial propaganda to make Kornites look bad, even if the reason for it is, questionable. Nurgle thinks that Korn should calm down, stop fighting anything that looks like it would present anything resembling a challenge and actively protect those who can't fight for themselves, rather than punishing those followers who can't live up to his expectations. When asked what he thinks of Nurgle, Korn responded with a long stream of curses, oaths and obscenities, strung together while foaming at the mouth. Empirical evidence show that they did however help to save Kila Mensha Kane from being killed, raped and eaten by Slanesh. Though Kane unfortunately ended up being broken in pieces in the process. 
Slanesh Nurgle isn't big on Slanesh's omnophilia and sadomasochism. Nurgle likes Slanesh the least of all chaos gods, the biggest reason to this has its root during Slanesh's inception. When Nurgle watched in horror as the newborn hermaphrodite killed and raped nearly all the elder gods and goddesses. Nurgle saved Isha from the perverted freak and cheered corn on as he fought to save Kila Mensha Kane while helping Segarach to hide in the webway. Our interview with Slanesh on the subject of Nurgle took the longest time of all. The details of the interview shall not be revealed in public documents as these, but simply put, Slanesh sees Nurgle as an ugly, fat, boring and insexy amoeba. Slanesh is an addition cranky that all STDs are accredited to Nurgle and not her himit. Nightbringer Nurgle isn't very happy about how coldly and mercilessly the Setan butchers all living things and then devours their souls. Nightbringer was surprisingly calm during our talk and even offered us a cup of tea. We sat down and listened to him talk for hours about how he can't fight his own nature, that he is rather upset with Nurgle often stealing his grim weeper shtick, as well as that Nurgle is a no good 2 bit youngster. These two apparently represent the polar opposites of how death could come for you. The deceiver Nurgle thinks that the deceiver is like Singe without all the magic, while having the dickish aspects of personality multiplied tenfold. When asked about his opinion, the deceiver gave us a set of riddles, caused one third of our interview crew to walk away, convinced another third to attack us, and made the rest of us hallucinate as if on acid. The Void Dragon Machine God. Nurgle isn't very fond of the fact that the Void Dragon eats the souls of those who have metal parts in their bodies and is quite unnerved of what he'll do when he wakes up. The Void Dragon was quite impossible to reach for an interview, since the Adeptus Mechanicus simply laughed in our faces when we asked for entry to the Noctis Labyrinthus. The Outsider Nurgle isn't sure what to think of the Outsider, but then again no one is, because he doesn't want to come out of that big sphere of his. We knocked, left Gifts outside and even detonated a warp drive a couple of kilometers away, but he wouldn't come out for an interview. The Emperor when asked about the Emperor, Nurgle's typical goofy grin widened when he said, I don't like referring to that old friend as the Enigma, but I sure love to irritate him in all kinds of ways. He is a nice chap, that one, but he really has no sense of humor. Nurgle then proceeded to make most of our team fall asleep by nostalgically telling us of their poker nights and how happy he was when he invented the infamous nose itch that has been irritating the Emperor for some thousands of years now. As for the Emperor's opinion, we will have to wait for Alpha Busa's next QA video. Isha Nurgle turned very serious when asked about his wife, which unnerved those awake and woke up those still asleep from his tales about poker nights with the Emperor. Nurgle gave us the impression of being overly protective, when he adamantly forbid us to get even close to the garden where Isha resides. He told us about how he rescued her from Slanesh 10,000 years ago and how he cooks for her. His love is serious and very strong. In the end, Nurgle got so excited from talking about how he shows his affection towards Isha, that he showed some of his favorite food recipes to us. Which accidentally made the majority of our reporters to him are hedge or internally combust. For those unfamiliar with the Elder Pantheon, Isha is the goddess of life, fertility and healing, which makes her immune to Nurgle's cooking and infamously poor hygiene. This arrangement is begging for a romantic sitcom. In Warhammer Fantasy Universe, she is known as Shalir and or Kalara. Kila Mensha Kane Nurgle is still upset that he and Korn couldn't save Kane from breaking during the fight with Slanesh. Nurgle tries to be nice to the avatars of Kane that pop up every now and then, even if they don't often return the favor. Since being the elder god of war and murder precludes silly things like friendship and interviews. Segarach while Nurgle thinks that the laughing god was more than a little selfish to hide behind Kane and then Korn. He is rather fond of the galaxy's greatest comedian and plays poker with him on a regular basis. When asked what Segarach thinks of Nurgle, our interview crew died laughing, so we had to recruit a completely new one. Recording this joke would need the help of a typically humorless mechanic and tech adept, but recruiting one for this task is simply impossible. The joke would simply have to rest for now. Malil Nurgle is concerned for Malil's self-destructing tendencies and self-inflicted solitary confinement. To demonstrate, he took some pastries and cooked a can of tea and took our crew out on a stroll to visit Malil. We knocked and the door opened just little enough for some anti-particles to escape the room beyond. Next moment, the door was slammed in our face with a force that sent everyone except Nurgle flying. Having the patience on the level not rivaled by anyone else, Nurgle simply put the tray down outside the door. On our way back, Nurgle told us that every next time he visits Malo, he finds the tray empty of its contents. Great Horned Rat a combination of a putrid, corrupted beast and siege, who squats in Nurgle's garden. 
Nobody likes the horned rat and thus no interview was bothered to be made. After Slanish was kidnapped by elves in Age of Skudner, Nurgle joined the other Chaos Gods in voting the horned rat into the great game as Slanish's replacement. That being said, great horned rat has been compared to an unwanted bastard child, and the analogy is well deserved. Gork and Mork whilst attempting to interview Nurgle about the green skin gods, the one we assumed to be Gork smashed through the wall and crushed the coffee table. Whereupon Mork burst through and attempted to disembowel him with a table leg. Our team was unable to describe what occurred next so we shall put it down to warp trickery. But the next thing they knew Nurgle was holding them both at arm's length while insisting that they make up. Mork begrudgingly held out a hand which Gork took, and as soon as they were put down, Gork heaved his brother over his shoulder and through the other wall. Sighing, Nurgle told us that they were good boys at heart, but that most of the time he had to repair the house after they have left. We managed to track down the two gods while they were calmer and asked them for their opinions. He's a good guy beneath all rotten flesh, and unlike asserting feathery CT he doesn't cheat at cards we assumed that this was Mork. That's right, our suspicions were confirmed. He doesn't try to interfere with our domains and isn't a dick to his servants continued Mork. That's right, Gork supplied. Unlike Korn and aforementioned feathery CT, he also doesn't mind being stuck with driving duties come Saturday, Mork said. That's right, Gork said, nodding sagely. Shut up Gork. You sound like your f***ing brain dead that's right finished a very happy Gork. Archeo Nurgle's opinion of Archeon is the same as of the other Chaos Gods. He can test Archeon whenever he wants and Archeon always passes. Archeon can be counted on as being a useful tool that can destroy entire universes, but his hatred of the Chaos Gods ensures none of them will ever have any more control over him than anyone else. This resulted in Nurgle putting everything he has under Archeon's command. Inad Nurgle isn't really big on Inad stealing his god of death shtick. More info soon. Side effects. Side effects of worshipping Papa Nurgle include and are not limited to. Boils. Scabs. Internal bleeding. External bleeding. Bleeding from the gums. Bleeding from eyes and ears. Hissing blood. Sweating. Dehydration. Carbuncles. Rash. Pus filled sores. Nausea. Vomiting. Bloody vomit. Black vomit. Black bloody vomit. Sneezing. Runny nose. Dry nose. Coughing. Dry cough. Wet cough. Not so dry but still raspy coughing. Fever. Hay fever. Meets wets. Athlete's foot. Athlete's arm. Swimmer's ear. Tennis elbow. Farmer's tongue. Milkmaid's nipples. Plowman's bottom. Browning of the nipples. Tender nipples. Hard nipples. Kitten nipples. Shitting dick nipples. Vertigo. Drowsiness. Suicidal thoughts, sleepiness, insomnia, mad cow disease, mad snail disease, mad postal worker disease, loose bowels, constipation, jiggly handles, anal leakage, smallpox, super smallpox, large pox, black death, pink death, black eye, pink eye, genetic disorders, heart attack, lung cancer, loss of skin, blood clots, spilling guts, frothing mouth. Rabies, puss excrement, moderate gas, medium gas, severe gas, holy shit who died gas, mortality, sudden mortality, baby mortality, super mortality, immortality, almost but not quite mortality, nergopromorphism, chicken box, turducken box, baldness, blood clotting, AIDS, super AIDS, STDs, STEEZ, zombification, crabs, super crabs, giant enemy crabs, spicrobes, random and painful erections, the condition known as hot dog fingers, salad fingers, Ebola, everything tasting of goats, reduced sex drive, increased sex drive, spontaneous breakouts of yuga hue, and mild discomfort of the neck. In most cases side effects were generally in the extreme and permanent. Consult your physician before worshipping Nurgle. Disclaimer. If you join Nurgle, we can't promise that you'll become the most attractive person in the world, or that you'll be accepted in many places. But Nurgle has a place for each and every one of us in his great big old diseased heart. Fun Nurgle facts. Nurgle, despite being the third most powerful chaos god, has possibly the smallest fanbase in Warhammer 40k. Apparently having weak fits, being allowed to scream just as planned, and receiving promotions is better than friendship and love, or anything else that Papa Nurgle offers. In contrast, he has the single largest fanbase in Warhammer Fantasy, partially due to how easy his models are to modify with green stuff and how overpowered his army has always been. Despite being the god of despair and decay, he's ironically a lot friendlier than the god of change and hope. 
As discussed in a TG thread, the Garden of Nurgle may be a metaphor for Asher and Nurgle being the same entity. This works great with the idea of Grandpa Nurgle in a dress, pretending to be a space elf princess and fits quite nicely with the King of the Netbirds theme some far TGUYS had developed. Nurgle has a strong association with fungi, bacteria and virus, things which cause or profit from sickness and death. Funny thing about all three is that they are where humanity's strongest medicines come from. Penicillin comes penicillium mold for example and it is hardly a one-off. Could this be Isha giving us a hand? Whispering the cures of his poxes to us. According to Storm of Magic, when Nurgle gets upset or depressed, he wanders off into the many bogs of his region of the realm of chaos to hunt plague toads, squashing them to cheer himself up. They make a fun squishing sound. Nurgle's triple circle symbol looks like a stylized fly the animal most commonly considered holy to Nurgle, a stylized version of the biohazard symbol and also represents the cycle of death, decay and rebirth, over which Nurgle has dominion. Nurgle is the only chaos god whose demons look just about like him. Plagubaras don't, but that's because they're the possessed souls of fallen enemies. According to the Tome of Decay for Black Crusade, Nurgle sees his role in the cosmos as a sort of galactic recycler. Entropy rises when life grows so old that order stagnates and decays, meaning it's chaos's job to consume and destroy everything, leaving rot in abundance for new, verdant life to be born from, clean and pure, until the cycle repeats again. Imagine forest fires that occur naturally to set a clean slate to the flora, before it almost chokes itself to death by overgrowing. Nurgle's job, as he sees it, is to euthanize the galaxy as quickly and as painlessly as possible, and as far as he's concerned. The galaxy is well overdue the time where it should have been cleansed to start a new life cycle. Ironically, this is a valid argument for Nurgle and Siege to work together in harmony for a common goal. Nurgle clears out the trash and gives Siege the room to begin again. The galaxy becomes a blank slate for Siege to experiment and coax new life to take shape and rise in the next cycle. Contradictingly, this is also an argument for Nurgle and Siege to fight with each other, as the god of change is not doing his job properly. Instead he is, ironically again, perpetuating the status quo for whatever reason, rather than letting Nurgle do his thing. It could also be that Siege is still helping him, since his plans might appear to maintain the status quo, while really planting seeds for the final collapse. Even in real life scenarios, in many cases of stagnation, the measures that are applied to hold a society or system afloat, eventually become too many until everything eventually collapses all over itself. He apparently succeeds at this goal in the end times of Warhammer Fantasy, perhaps fitting, along with the various analyses on this page. Tsinj seemed mostly cool with the fact, while Slanesh wasn't. Murgle's main demon unit, the Plagubaras, are the second most fucking impossible to kill enemies in Warhammer Fantasy, surpassed only by Plagumarines in 40k and great unclean ones in Fantasy. Worth noting that the Plague Marines are just Plagubaras with cool armor and guns, while great unclean ones are miniature versions of Nurgle himself. Each one can soak up 13.5 bolter shots on average, before dropping dead do not ever 100% trust Math Hammer though, which some find unreasonable considering that they cost one point less than regular space marines, meaning that a more expensive model will have little hope in killing it by the time it usually takes to complete a full game. You don't want to know how many Lasgan shots is needed to be fired at one to kill it 36. Then you get into a fantasy, where you need fire, and as much of it as possible, and cannons. Lots and lots of cannons. Nurgle's the reason you're itching right now. Despite what you may think, Nurgle can fail, and he knows it. Case in point Luke. Mentioning the name of Pasteur in front of Nurgle makes him go into such a rage even Korn gets appalled. He still hasn't managed to catch the old Doc soul, Hon 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 for that matter. Count Jensen, Fleming, and yes Anne among Papa Nurgle's blacklist too. Slanesh pissed off Nurgle by constantly wanting to get Isha back. Nurgle in retaliation created STDS. According to the 8th edition Chaos Codex, Nurgle once attempted to create a flesh-eating disease but accidentally created a disinfectant. Not even the bravest of great unclean ones dare bring up the subject again. Nurgle does not extend his free hugs policy to Tsinch. Not out of hate, but because they will cancel each other out of existence. Famous servants. Bubonicus, Nurgle's version of Korn's Doombreed, Slanesh's Enkari, and Tsinch's Mkachan. Like Slanesh's second in command. Bubonicus has no chance of being a real-life historical figure unlike M. Kachin and Doombreed since he was born a good deal after humanity became a spacefaring species and was not in fact born on Terra, but instead hailed from the same planet as Enkari. 
He is something of an oddity among the four great demon princes, since he's not roughly as old as Nurgle, while the other three are about as old as their respective gods. He has a huge line of dances on one planet that goes across said planet's equator and they keep on dancing until they catch Ubersyphilis and become Plaguburas. At which point they leave to fight for Nurgle while someone else takes their place. The absolute fucking life of the party. His primary rival among the demon princes is not Mkachin as one would expect, but Inkari, as they were enemies in their mortal life. Skabiathrax, Nurgle's version of Korn Zengriff. Slanish's Arachnal and Sinch's Eteos Rock ears say that 5 times fast. Famous for having T9 and 10 wounds meaning that he's completely impervious to any attack that doesn't at least have S6. He's the biggest and strongest of all of Nurgle's greater demons and is probably the strongest of all of his servants in general. If Ulka has 2,800,000 hit points, then Skabiathrax would have 280 billion. Kugath. Kugath was once a small Nurgling sitting on the shoulder of Nurgle while he was concocting his greatest disease yet. Suddenly, Kugath slipped off of Nurgle's shoulder and straight into the pot he was cooking in, accidentally swallowing it all and becoming a great unclean one in the process. Nurgle laughed the whole incident off, but Kugath felt guilty of robbing Nurgle of his greatest achievement. Since then, Kugath has been trying to recreate the disease that he ruined in his ascension to greater demonhood. Rotigus, a great unclean one worshipped throughout both the mortal realms and the Milky Way as a fertility god. Known as the Rainfather for his ability to conjure up Nurgle's deluge, a reign of filth that perpetually surrounds him. Epidemius, a herald of Nurgle and his greatest talisman. Horticular Slimux, a herald of Nurgle said to be his first demon he ever made and by implication, probably was patient zero for Nurgle's rot, is Nurgle's chief gardener, and rides a giant snail called Mulch. 40k. Mortarian, demon primarch of the death guard that hasn't done much since ascending to demonhood but to sit around all grumpy up until the great rift and Gilliman woke up. Mortarian has now reunited the death guard and are now having a party. Typhus the Traveler, Herald of Nurgle, a rational fellow, mostly famous for being a tough son of a bitch to kill which is owed to the fact that he is encased in Terminator armor and is fully pledged to Nurgle. Typhus to Nurgle is what Khan is to Korn, which means that he's Nurgle's favorite mortal servant. Also famous for grabbing guardsmen and marines alike with his scythe to drag them closer to his hug friendly arms as well as causing zombie plagues. Too bad that everyone who gets too close to him rot away into a pile of green slop. Typhus is also the name of a disease, because GW are nothing if not subtle. Ulka the Great Unclean One. Ulka is notable due to his history with the Blood Ravens, and was imprisoned by Kerus a thousand years before the storyline of Chaos Rising came back when Elif was sacrificed to a bunch of blood ravens and provided him with a plague marine to possess. A notoriously tough bastard. Falseborn. Falseborn is the only known case where, after becoming a you know what, it did not die, but rather continued its existence by swallowing its victims whole. Currently keeps the record of giving the best hunts in this galaxy. Korbax Utterblight. Korbax Utterblight is a demon prince that was summoned by the word bearers during the Horus Heresy. He was created by Forge World for the Horus Hersey tabletop game. Deacon Maimon, a demagogue of Nurgle who ascended to become a demon prince after his efforts in corrupting the planet Vrax. Another Forge World Nurgle demon prince. Fantasy. Augustine Demonspew, the child of a human witch and a great unclean one don't ask, imagine the details yourself who wants to join his father by becoming a demon. Tried to contract Nurgle's rot and become a Plagubera, but when his already quasi demonic nature made that fail he decided it was better to become a demon prince, leader of the Magath Lords. Festus the Leek Lord, a man who fancies himself to be Nurgle in the mortal form, constantly makes concoctions from experimental diseases and forces his enemies to drink them. Blowbrot Sport, a Magath Lord made up mostly of flies wearing a human skin as punishment for torturing tiny insects out of petty spite. Morbid X Twizzleborn, a Magath Lord who resembles a Nurgling, and commands a vast swarm of them. Has a grudge against Sinch due to being severely burned as a child and his tribe believing that Sinch was the god of fire. The Glotkin, a trio of demonic brothers Gurk, that has become something akin to a great unclean one, Otto, the tactician of the three, and Ethrak, the wizard. Guthrid Spume, a highly mutated servant of Nurgle who's known for his arrogance, leads a vast fleet of Nurglite pirates. TG. Puckeo, Nurgle's demonic tooth rot fairy, gum disease and sweets. Often seen as an overweight, pus dripping cherub who likes to play pranks on people, usually by removing healthy teeth from the mouths of unsuspecting mortals as they sleep. As you can expect he is a fun guy. Luke, I don't know where to start. Just, hug. 
Sisters the Malignant, the sickest fuck to inhabit real space since Typhus himself. Fan created Chaos Lord whose endeavors are still being written. Chair Lord of Nurgle, a morbidly obese Ohio man whose very flesh became fused to his recliner, rendering him unable to be removed from it. There he remained seated in the recliner for multiple years soaking in his own filth and bodily excretions and covered in maggots, being fed by his underlings. When the news of his death reached TG around 2011 they immediately recognized the man as a herald of Nurgle, dubbing him the chair lord. As a general note, the followers of Nurgle usually retain higher levels of common sense compared to followers of the other chaos gods, probably because they don't usually go insane to the point of uncontrollable defecation. They just defecate uncontrollably sanity has nothing to do with it. They usually get creative in their conquests and tend to get cool gear and use it well. Plague Marines for example, got bored with regular frag and crack grenades and decided to instead use the severed heads of their enemy zombified. Plague ridden, embalmed, severed heads. Honestly, he doesn't love Papa Nargle, he's just a solid all line fella, and he's nothing like that dickhead Skanesh. He just keeps in, trying to invite you to like, them that weird swear clubs and shit, it's really fucking weird. I don't know why he keeps asking me for that, but look, who knows. Anyway, um, no, I highly recommend 1D4 Chant. It's great for the lure, I know it's not the best place to go for lure, but it's a solid climber, and it's a lot of fun to read. Like, I love all the articles on there, like, you know, I find them really good, to be honest with you. Like, you know, they're very well written, and like, you know, they're just fun, you know what I mean? Though, as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that other good shit, and I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This... this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This... this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's weighing down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?